Imagine the surprise and the delight of the shepherds first hearing these words from the host of angels appearing to them, and they immediately left their flocks untended except by God and hurried to the cave where Jesus had just been born. Let us sing number 424. Hark the herald angels sing number 424.
city of Jerusalem. Bethlehem is still today tiny and obscure. Yet God chose this humble place to come to earth to begin the greatest work in the history of mankind. Please join in singing number 446, O Little Town of Bethlehem, verses 1, 2, and 4.
first Christmas, when Emmanuel, God with us, became one of us to begin his work to save us from our sinfulness and to reunite us in love with our Heavenly Father. Please join me in singing number 460, the first Noel, verses 1 and 2. Jesus lay asleep in the hay, unaware of the angels, 
singing his praise. Merry Christmas to you all, even though you have one more sleep to go till you can open all your presents. I'd like to remind you the community table is closed for tomorrow night and next Tuesday, New Year's Day, and will reopen on January 8th. Time to silence your cell phones, please. We have a custom in our parish. At the end of the Mass, we all kneel and silently say three Hail Marys for world peace and the next one amongst us to be called home by God. Please stand now and welcome those around you with a heartfelt Merry Christmas!
Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. shall marry you, 
and as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Our song is number 64, Forever I Will Sing.
the word of the Lord.
sophisticated with the young folks these days, aren't we? Good. What gift did you get? Legos! How many of you had Legos at home? A few of you do. Good. What's another gift? What did you get? Your favorite gift. A train, wow, that's good. Well, it's good to see girls are playing with trains too. It's not just a guy's toy, is it? Wonderful, what's another gift? A Nintendo Switch, boy. That's some heavy duty hardware there too. Name another. Cars, do you like cars? Wonderful, what's one more? A stuffed unicorn. Wow, that's a pretty cool gift, wonderful. Well, we'll add one here too, go ahead. Electric guitar, do you know how to play the guitar pretty well? Would you like to join our choir someday? We could use another guitarist in addition to Jeannie Green over there too. Wonderful. Keep that in mind for future reference. Well, I'm glad you all shared that, and I'm sure you'll get wonderful gifts tomorrow, but you know, keep in mind there are a lot of boys and girls around the world who would love to get a gift, but they're so poor that a lot of them don't get any presents for Christmas. And I want to tell you a little true story. This is based on a true story, a friend of mine that I spoke to just a couple of weeks ago, and ironically enough, his favorite gift that he remembers was a toy train. So you had a good answer there, didn't you? And he told me that many, many years ago, when he was a little boy, maybe about six or seven years old, he remembers one specific Christmas that really taught him the special meaning of Christmas. So I want to share that with you this, this day. Now, his family, he told me, he had several siblings, brothers and sisters, and his family was not very wealthy. They didn't have a lot of money, but somehow his mom and dad always seemed to come up with a lot of good gifts to give him for Christmas. But there was a family living right next door to him that hardly had anything. Because next door, with the children the same age as he was, the father had been just recently laid off from work, so he was not working, and the mother stayed home with the kids. So they didn't really have an income for that Christmas. So it was very tough times for them. So he remembers that one particular Christmas morning, all his brothers and sisters ran downstairs, they saw all the piles of gifts under the tree, and how excited they were to whip them all open and see what they got. And they uh, opened up a lot of things that a lot of parents often give their kids. How many of you get socks sometimes for Christmas? <laughs> or sweaters for Christmas? Yeah, so he opened them up, he got some socks, he got a sweater, he got some other things, a few toys that he usually would get from moms and dads, usually during Christmas. But then he saw, he really had his hopes that he'd get his first toy train set. And he looked around feverishly, and he saw a big package behind the Christmas tree that had his name on it. <clears throat> and he thought, oh, I bet I know what that is. That's got to be the train set. And so as he went to get the gift behind the tree, <clears throat> his parents told him this. You know, honey, you got a lot of wonderful gifts. And your friend, who's the same age as you next door, doesn't really have all those gifts that you have. As a matter of fact, I understand from his parents, they're not able to get anything this Christmas for them. So wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if you would be willing to give up that last present you have and give it to the boy next door? And his jaw dropped. Because I gotta give up my train that I've been waiting for. And so his parents, honey, we're not gonna force you to do anything you don't want to do, but we just thought we would put that out there and see what you think. And you know, tears started welling up in his eyes because he was thinking how much fun he'd have with this train. But then as he thought about it, he thought that boy could really use something special too. So with tears in his eyes, he went to the back of the tree, and he got the gift, and he picked it up, and he handed it to his mom and dad, and his mom and dad just beamed with pride. They were so amazed and happy that their son was doing such a beautiful thing, giving up something he loved and wanted so much to give it to somebody else in need, and his parents thanked him and went next door and brought the gift over and boy, they actually saw that boy's face light up 
like you wouldn't believe. He was so excited. And the parents came back, and while the parents were gone, my friend was crying his eyes out in the next room. And then his parents came to him and said, Honey, I want you to join us in the dining room for a moment. And so he wiped the tears from his eyes. He went to the dining room. Honey, I see there's one more gift behind the cabinets in the dining room. Go check that out. He says, All right, what's mom and dad up to now? And he goes back there and he takes that out and he unwraps it. And guess what it was? A train, A train set! They got him one because they figured he would give up the other one. And then his parents told him this, Honey, the true meaning of Christmas is that it's more important to give than receive. And when you share, God always fills you up with something even better than what you gave up. And that is the true meaning behind Christmas, isn't it? Because when God came into the world as a tiny child, and he grew up to be an adult, Jesus gave up everything he had for all of us. He gave up his life for us. So that we could get the greatest Christmas gift that we could ever get, which is to do what? Go to heaven someday. Where we can live happily ever after. You don't want to go to heaven! about how Jesus is asking you to share what he's already given you. And you all have a lot of great things, especially through what your parents have given you. So keep sharing, keep loving, keep giving. And believe me, God will reward you for all the good things that you share. Okay? So I'm going to hand out a special Christmas sheet here that has some fun puzzles and coloring pages on it. How many of you like to color? Yeah. Yummy, it's not a key. Who wants to help pass these out? Yummy! One, Yummy. and two, come on up. And once you get this, I want you to take it quietly back to your seats where your families are, okay? And I hope you all have a very, very Merry Christmas. Thank you for listening. So just hand one to each child, okay? One from her, okay? Nor get up, nor get up, nor get up, nor get up. And when you receive your sheet, quietly go back to your pews, please. Merry Christmas to you, thank you.
here is us. That the church may continue to be a beacon of Christ's light, of hope, and love to all peoples of every land. Through works of faith, peace, and caring service, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that leaders of all nations may strive in the spirit of Christ, the King of Kings, to promote peace and justice for all men, women, and children, to enjoy, especially the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all travelers may reach their destination safely during the Christmas season, and for the safety of all our military men and women, especially those who are away from their families at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen away from the act actively practicing the Catholic faith in the church, and that the light of Christ's love may guide them back, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the many hundreds of people who were injured or killed by the recent tsunami in Indonesia, that the survivors may receive critical care to help them live on and rebuild, and that the dead may rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may provide merciful help for those who are hungry and homeless, the poor, lonely, or stressed, and those who are sick, especially relatives and friends, and those listed in our bulletin and in our prayer book of requests. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially our family members, relatives, friends, and parishioners, that they may rejoice in the peaceful light of heaven forevermore. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our special intention is for all the living and the deceased priests in our diocese. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your personal prayers offered now in silence. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wondrous love, we marvel at the countless ways that you share your love with us, especially through your only Son, Jesus, born among us to set us free. Help us in our many needs and guide us to your eternal home in heaven. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 434, Sing Hallelujah, number 434.
You, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly through the Holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or the offer to themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, and our Lord the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, and Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those who have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice and his holy and venerable hand and blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, 
and bid us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon in Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before I offer the final blessing, just a couple of words of acknowledgement. First of all, I'd like to thank the wonderful musicians, vocally and instrumentally, for providing such beautiful and prayerful music. And we thank them for a job well done. after our morning masses to set up and decorate the entire church which just glows with radiance. Can we show them our appreciation? I'd also like to thank Deacon Tom uh, for helping out and our altar servers, our elector, our Eucharistic ministers, our ushers and greeters, and uh, all of you for your presence. Can we thank everybody for their work?